Joining me today, um, we are making some very pretty uh, lucite leaf and flower bracelets. These remind me of like Midsummer Night's Dream. I don't know why. I think they remind me of like little flower fairies. They're very, very, very pretty. Really simple to do. All I'm going to be doing is turning some loops on some lovely little ball pins, attaching them to a chain with some jump rings. It's as straightforward as it can possibly be. So I hope you're all okay this morning. Say hello in the chat. Let me know what you're doing this week. Um, what's the weather like where you are today? It is dull, dull and cold looking. Good morning to you, Edward. Are you okay? Um, so I hope you're all well. I hope you're all wrapped up and um ready to go so i'm going to take you over to the website i'm going to be just making um with a mix today because they're all so lovely and there's so much for you to choose from so i'm going to do a mix of colors i'll show you some of the samples that i've done um i'll go through the technique of turning a loop for you um and we'll just get going so good morning to allison good morning to celia she says it's sunny in bolton edward says he's good Carol says, good morning, uh, Natalie and our Beedon family, lovely sunny day in Brixham. Good morning to Elaine, good morning to Marcia, she says, it's cold and dark in New York, it's also 5am, very good morning to you Marcia, hope you're well. Good morning to Tina, she says, um, she's going to save it for later because she's got to go to work, so I hope you have a really good day in work Tina, I hope by the time you next look at your watch, it's lunchtime and before you know it, you're on the home stretch. Good morning to Lucy. Good morning to Victoria. She says, good morning, everyone. Good morning to Kitty. See you on Friday. So excited. Good morning to Camille. She says she thinks it looks brightish. Is that the weather, Camille? Because we've got some lovely bright colours for you today. I think, you know, as I keep saying, I am longing for summer. So um, these are just really lovely. They're very spring-like, very, very pretty. Good morning to Sharon, good morning to Rachel, good morning to Anne, good morning to Angela. Um, she said she's had some sleet, um, but now um, the sun and then due to rain. So you've got all sorts going on there by the looks of it. Good morning to Jackie, good morning to uh, Trish, good morning to Linda. Linda says, good morning, beautiful sunshine in here in Reigate. How do I pronounce that one? not very good at pronouncing places or names good morning to christine she says it's damp and wet in swansea good morning to josephine hello mina um hello mickey she says good morning from kansas hello to you thank you for joining me uh, good morning to sheila um good morning to joanne hello to you all so let's get over to the website and I will show you how lovely these are. I've been itching to use these for quite some time now. So we're going over to totallybeads.co.uk. You can click in the video tutorials here. You can scroll down there or you can go into categories, whichever you prefer. So these are our beautiful bracelets today. You can probably hear me jingling away because I'm wearing one. Um, and it, they're very, very lovely. So um, we have a very mixed selection for you today. We've got loads to choose from. You are getting 100 pieces in the flower mix for £6. It should have been 9 99 So the flowers that you're getting, you can see here, they're 18 millimetres. You've got a one millimetre hole and you're getting 100 pieces. So they're acrylic and they're really lovely for costume jewellery making so they're slightly transparent with a bit of a frosted appearance and there are beautiful beautiful colours in there for you so as I say today I'm going to do a mix I have done where I've kind of done my samples in terms of order of colour so I've done like a blue one a pink one a purple one today I'm going to do one with all of them because they're just so lovely so that is the hundred pieces we've also got some lovely lovely leaf shapes they're beautiful they've got like a vine running on them on the tail it's really nice so you can get 170 pieces in the this size we've got small and large the small are 20 by 18 millimeters and they are six pound for 170 pieces so i mean you can make these as full as you like but even if you try and put so many on there you're going to be able to make multiple 
multiple bracelets, you could make gorgeous earrings, you can do whatever you want with these. So they're the small ones for six pounds. And then we've all got the large ones here as well for you. Now you're getting 75 pieces. They are 28 by 27 millimeters and they are six pounds. That's down from 9.99 today. If you don't want them all, what's up with you? And you'd rather just have a um, selection of colors, you can choose them individually. So you can choose from pale, gray, aqua, red, white, amethyst, a gorgeous aqua blue in the leaves is just so pretty. You can have baby pink, you can choose green, gray, purples, there's all sorts of colors there for you in the leaves and the flowers. Um, the leaves are £1.50 and you're getting 35 pieces in that. So again, that's discounted as well. And um, to make the bracelets with them, all I'm going to be adding as an extra is some jump ring. So I'm using the six millimums. You get 150 pieces in your jump rings and they are £1.50. I'm also going to be using some uh, ball pins. You're getting 50 pieces in there and they are also £1.50. So you can choose um, to match your gold with your gold jump rings and your chain if you like. Or you can choose from the rose gold or the silver plated. They're all so lovely. It's entirely up to you. I, Again, I think different colours look nicer with different chains. But today I'm going to do a mix. So I'm going to use the gold. Uh, the chains are the Figaro chains and they are one pound. So an absolute bargain. So you might already have chain. You might already have ball pins. You might already have the jump rings. You might just want to get these lovely, lovely packs of your flowers instead. It's entirely up to you. I think it's really good when we put the offer on like this where you don't have to buy a big bundle with all of the things in it if you've already got lots in your stash. So they are the products that we're using today. They are an absolute bargain. So as I say, for the um, large packs, so the mixed packs rather, you're getting 40% off there for a single pack, that's 25% off. So some absolutely lovely, lovely bargains for you. Um, we've got lots of people looking happy with that. Uh, good morning, Penny, how are you doing, sweetheart? Um, we've also got Lucy kindly sharing the link for today's live. You're all saying hello and good morning to each other. Um, who had to head count them? Oh, who had to count them? Is that in regards, um, Angela, to the pieces? The warehouse team are amazing. Um, I think a lot of the time things go on weight. So they have like little scales and they can pull things out. But I'm sure with these, somebody has sat and counted every single one and it wasn't me. Um, so thank you for the Totally Beads team for getting all those goodies together for us today. Good morning to Jitty. Good morning to you all. So Lucy says the bundles are a fab price. Everyone's quite excited about them. Hi Sharon, are you okay? Um, Lucy says she's got some in her stash, but she's not sure where her stash is. And Teresa says, um, these are such fun to make and they make such pretty sound when they move, when you use them. I use them in headbands and earrings and necklaces and bracelets. They're just so fun. Can you hear me jingling? I think they're just so pretty. Um, and good morning to Nicole. All right, let me take you down on the mat and I will show you these beauties. So I'm wearing this one. It's a little big on me, but I just wanted to put it on so you can hear just how lovely that is. Good morning from Pauline in the USA. Aren't they lovely? So this is the um, grey one that I used. I've put some grey and white together on this one and I've put them on the silver. The very pretty pink, I added in a couple of little beads in there as well. I've put on the rose gold. And I don't know if you can see, because I'm, I'm hoping it's not too fuzzy today. How's the picture looking? Is it okay? You can see on them, they have these lovely little details on the front of them. So they've got little veins running through the leaf. I do hope you can see that because they are so pretty. They've got this lovely kind of frosted look to them. Please 
focus camera. Oh, good. Marcia says it looks good to her. The blues, I think, are really gorgeous. Again, I've put them with the white. I've done a mix of sizes in the leaves. I've added on some of those gorgeous little flowers. Popped on a couple of beads as well, just for that extra, extra little dangly charms. I've done the purple and I've done this against the silver. I have included some of the flowers in there. And I think when you put them on the ball pins, they just, they fit really lovely, but they also give that lovely little central part to your flower, a little extra bit of decoration. So again, I've chose to put these on the silver. I mean, I've not used flowers in all of them. Have I put, no, I haven't done any flowers in these ones. I, I do love this. I've just used the leaves on this, so I've used a mix of these lovely reddishy pinky colored leaves the large green leaves and again i've added in a few extra beads as well so you can do whatever you like with these now all i'm going to be doing is turning loops so to begin with i'm going to show you on a little piece of wire how i turn a loop and I'm going to do it on the wire just so it's nice and clear. It's larger so you can see this. Um, so when I start doing it on the head pins or the ball pins, rather, you know, you'll still be able to see what I'm doing. But hopefully this makes it a little bit clearer for you. And Nicole says, I love the blues and the purples. The green and reds remind me of Christmas. They are a little bit Christmassy. They remind me of, um, of vine leaves, really. I think... Um, the green one is beautiful for autumn. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. This reminds me of um, like grapevines. Red wine is a little bit Christmassy. So when I do my wrap loops, what I tend to do is I will bend my pin or my wire at 90 degrees. It's a little bit over. There you go. Then I get my round nose pliers and I'm going to position those pliers as close to that bend as I can. And with my non-dominant hand and finger, I'm just going to give that little turn and twist. So I've made that into a loop. Now, the important thing about bending that wire first, I have done that a lick. This wire is obviously going to be different from using the head pins. The head pins are a much smaller gauge and... Um, a lot softer to use but I've used this large gauge I think this is a 0 0.8 just to show you so by putting that 90 degree bend in it I'm trying to get this loop to sit on top of my pin and then you can adjust that to straighten it up if you need to by just popping your round nose pliers in and if you want so you don't want to distort it you can hold on to your loop why you just bring this round now i tend to use my fingers because the wire on the ball pins is really soft but you can use your tools if you want to and you just want to make that first wrap quite close to that loop as you can and then i tend to wrap two or three times as i say this is a much larger gauge so you'll find it easier to work with and then all I'm going to do is chop that little tail off. And then tuck it down to make sure that there's no sharp edges. Now I'm doing this on the wire, as I say, just because it's larger. And I get to show you a little bit what I'm doing. Without the beads or the flowers being in the way. And that's how easy it is to turn a loop. So Sarah says, I find when turning loops, the plating cracks off. How do I stop this? Um, sometimes it can. Um, I haven't found it too much of an issue. I suppose it depends on which um, head pins or ball pins you're using. I never have that issue with the silver plated. Um, some of the, jump, uh, the ball pins I've had in my stash, 
may not be totally beads quality. I might be just using some that I've got left over. So sometimes that does happen. With something like this, you can't see it anyway. So if I'm holding this up or I'm wearing this, the only thing that's really on show is the tiny little ball through my flower. Um, so even if my loops aren't that neat and aren't that straight, can you see that there? You can't really see them because the leaves and the flowers tend to cover them. So it's not been too much of an issue for me. Um, oh my goodness. Angela says, we've got snowstorm outside. I think I'm staying in. Well, I'm bringing you the spring here today. Um, mind you, this one, this muted colour, that's quite frosty, isn't it? I hope you're staying warm. Um, Mina wants to know where you live. Um, so Sarah says that the totally beads ones. Um, as I say, I've not found it too much of an issue. Um, but I suppose, you know, you might sometimes get a little bit of the plating that does come off. Good morning to Pauline. Everyone's jealous of the snow. Okay. Where have you gone? There you are. So let's get going. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to cut my chain. So I've cut my chain. This is quite small, but I'm cutting it to the length that I'm going to want my bracelet to be on. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to add a jump ring and a lobster clasp to each end. You can do this at the end. It doesn't matter when you attach these. I'm just going to do mine to start off, I think. So I'm going to open up my jump ring. I'm going to use as much of my pliers as I can. So I'm just leaving that little gap where it opens. Let's move these out the way so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm holding them with as much grip. I'm not just pincing it at the corner. I'm going to use as much as I can. And I'm just going to give that a little twist. I do mine towards me. You can do them away from you, whichever you want. And then all I'm going to need to do is thread that on. If I want to add my clasp, I pop that on next onto that jump ring before I do the same to close it up. As I say, I move it towards me or away from myself. I'm not opening them up that way because I don't want to distort that shape. And then all I'm going to do when I'm closing it is I'm going to go slightly past that point where it meets and then when I let go it should spring closed so I've got a perfectly closed jump ring. So they are ready to go. That is my bracelet and you can use any clasp you want on this. I do find the lobster clasps are um, well just handy really. Um, if you need them in your findings kit, you can also get your essential finding kit on the website if you need any of those. And now all I'm going to do is just start making a little mix of flowers. So because I'm using the gold chain, I'm going to be using my lovely gold head pins, ball pins. And I am going to choose... Oh, I can't decide. I'm going to use some of the larger leaves I think so I'm going to get one of these lovely blue ones can you see one side has got that lovely vein detail on it the other side doesn't but it's frosted and it's very very pretty and I'm also going to add another little one over the top I quite like these when they're layered up so I'm going to put one of the small white ones and I'm going to have that sitting on top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the smaller one on first with the veins facing down towards the ball on the top of my pin. And then I'm going to add the other one in the same direction with the veins towards 
the back of that first leaf. And then I'm going to do a little bend. I'm going to take my round nose pliers. And I'm going to give that little loop over. And then I'm going to adjust where my hand is holding on my round nose and bring that loop all the way around. If I need to, I can give it a little nudge to adjust, but at the moment, that's sitting fairly neat at the top of my pin. This is why I showed you with the wire first, because I want you to make sure that you can see what I'm doing here. Joanne says, I love the blue, my favorite color. I tend to put my round nose back in. You can hold it with your pliers if you want. All I'm gonna do, is bring that round. So if you want to use your tools, you can do. If you want to use your fingers, you can do. And I'm just gonna give that a little turn so that first loop is sitting nice and close. Can you see? Will it focus? And then I'm gonna wrap this probably about three times. As I say, I tend to just do it with my fingers. You might want to start with the first loop with your pliers if you need to. If you want to just make sure you're getting that tension on there. And then I'm just wrapping that round. So if you can see, that's what it's looking like at the moment. I don't have any of the plating coming off this one at all. I'm not having any problems with that. And then I'm going to trim my tail end off. As I say, I keep hold of that tail with my fingers so it doesn't ping away. And then with my pliers, I'm just gonna tuck that down. Now, if you want, you can pop your round nose back in just to stop that twisting around while you tuck that in. And it doesn't matter if it's perfectly neat, because as I say, you're not gonna see it underneath your flower or your leaf. But I do wanna make sure that end's tucked in. So there I have my first one. I think I'm gonna do the same again, only this time I'm just gonna use some of the little leaves on their own. So I'm gonna take my ball pin and I'm just gonna sit and make a little pile of these. They are quite quick to do. Obviously, when I'm slowing down to show you, they're taking a little bit longer, but you'll get quite quick at these. And it's probably quite a an important technique to be able to master in your jewellery making is turning a loop. But you can see just how easy that wire is just going round, even with my fingers. If I'm using my tools, it probably gets a little bit neater because I'm able to put a little bit more tension on that. And say if you want to pop your round nose pliers in, again you can. Just to stop that spinning about while you tuck in that little end. And say I love using the ball pins with these because I think that just gives that extra little bit of detail. It's very, very pretty. I'm going to use a flower, I think, as well. So I'm going to take some of those out. And you can just, you know, do this while you're, you're watching the telly or maybe listening to some music. Just make a little pile. All I'm doing is making sure 
but the vine side of this with that little detail is is facing forward and making sure this little loop is as close to that bend as I can I just reposition my hand to get my loop in if I need to I can give it a little knock as in just readjust it slightly to make that loop sit on top of the pin and I give it a little wrap round I'm just using my fingers for that but if you want to you can use your tools what have I dropped I've dropped my chain trim off that tail just tuck that in so I'm going to start making a little pile for them to sit I think this is going to look really lovely having that mix Lucy says the colours are so pretty they look really nice together don't they I've not even added the pink in yet so I think a mix would look really nice on the silver um, the gold or the rose gold really And they do make a lovely sound when you're wearing them. So I'm going to pop my round nose in. Give that a little tuck in. Victoria says, all the lucite flowers open like a daisy or deep as in a snowdrop or bluebells there are different flowers you can get so if you have a little look on the website in fact let me let me share the screen again there are different types that you can get if you like lucite into the search The ones that I'm using today are these open ones. However, there are, I'm sure there were, these like beautiful trumpet shaped ones as well. I love them. I kind of wish I had them with me today because I do a big mix. But you've also got the trumpet shaped ones where those petals kind of curl around. The ones that I'm using at the moment are open. So they look, to, they have got a little curve on them. But they they flatten out. I hope that's answered your question. So you can use this technique with whichever shape it works with the leaf, it works with the trumpet flowers, whatever you like. probably made that loop quite large because I've started to move down my pliers but it doesn't really matter too much if you want you can take your tools just give that a little wrap and you see these pins are really soft to work with they just go around nice and easy I tend to wrap two or three times before giving that a little trim. Try and trim close to that twist as you can. And then just give that a little tuck down. You are welcome, Victoria. I hope I answered your question. So I'm gonna do a few more flowers and a few more leaves. I'm just using my round nose now even to make that bend just to speed me up so I don't have to keep picking up 
or the chills. When I'm trying to be as neat as possible, I will pick up my um, needle nose or chain nose pliers just to bring that wire around. But most of the time, I just use my fingers. Tuck that in. So we've got that nice little loop and that little wrap. Okay, let's do some more. I'll do some more leaves and then I might even add on a couple of beads. Just like the, um, they all kind of, oh, how have I done that? I don't know how I did that. Let's get another ball pin. I like how they, they dangle. So it's like a little charm bracelet. Look how quick I'm doing these now. I'm going to cut that quite close. And give that a little tuck in. This is as close as I've got to gardening so far this year. So I'm going to do some more leaves. I think I'm going to add some of the large green ones. I'm going to add some different colours on top of them. What would that look like? That might be quite pretty. I'll put some of the purples on top. I'm trying to get a mix. You can obviously spend a little bit more time Playing about with what colours look nicest together. You might have a particular theme that you're going for. I'm just making all sorts of everything today. A little spin. And a little trim. And tuck that in. Just checking if I have missed any of your questions. So just bear with me while I have a little scroll up. Uh, oh, I've been asked by Pauline what gauge is the pins. The pins are 0.5 millimeter wire, um, I think, and they are nickel free. Um, so they are nice to work with. So as I say, I was showing you how to do the wrap loop on this, which is my little bit of copper wire and that's 0 0.8. So you can see it is a thinner gauge and is softer and easier to wrap and to loop with. So yeah, I think that's a 0 0.5. So I'm going to do a few more of these. Start adding them onto my chain. Do you have a favourite flower? I I love a hydrangea. Had a hydrangea hydrangeas at my wedding. Um, I like little forget me nots as well. And I love the smell of sweet peas. My in-laws have the most beautiful garden. They are from farming background and heritage. So they're great at growing all sorts of things. Um, but they have lovely sweet peas in their garden. And my father-in-law always cuts me some and lets me take some home. Um, but I just love the smell of them. They're very, very lovely. Hibiscus, says Paulie. They smell gorgeous too, don't they? 
I got a beautiful lily um, and I had a gorgeous orchid for my birthday. Um, and my orchid is still going strong. It's still in flower. Not the most green fingered, I'll be honest. But I think that's why I love my hydrangeas because I have them in the garden and they um, have a colour on them all, all year, really. So I think it depends on the acidity of your soil. If you have um, different alkalines, then they will be more pink or more blue. Um, but as we get to winter, they tend to um, go like this kind of crimsony red colour. So even when they dry out, I think they look very beautiful. Often when I'm taking photographs of the jewellery that I've made, I'll um, try and use some of my flowers as a backdrop. Oh, Elaine says she's doing the beaded hydrangea at the moment from the first day of Christmas pack. How lovely. How are you getting on with it, Elaine? Oh, I love that word, Camille. A frangipani. Am I pronouncing that right? Frangipani? I love peonies as well. Um, I don't know. Different flowers remind me of different places and different memories. My mum has a beautiful magnolia in her garden, which she had in the first house that we lived in. Um, it was off her dad, my granddad. So she desperately wanted to take that with her and um, she potted it and it's doing all right. So I'm longing for the summer now. I'm excited when I see the daffodils. I know spring has sprung. I think I'm going to need some more large leaves. I'm just going to put my chain up that I dropped before. Um, oh, Mina says she still has orchid, orchids to make from the kit that she bought in October 2020. I love, right, now this, you, for someone who says she struggles to pronounce the names of things, mesembryanthemums, now I know chrysanthemum, I don't know what that is, um, but Sue says she only had one flower came out last year, her fingers firmly crossed that we've got more this year, I think you're just, you're going to be just making up some names for me now, aren't you, and I won't, I won't know. <laughs> Right, let's do some larger leaves. Um, Sarah said, uh, Pauline says, Sarah, I agree. Adding some crystals will be very pretty. I'm going to add some beads into this. I've got some lovely bright beads, um, which I think match the blues and the pinks quite nice. So I think I'm going to pop some of them in. Angela says, these are beautiful, really different looking. Um, well, I've seen them a little while ago when I was down at the warehouse and I've been itching to make something with them. Um, I think Kitty made, I think she called them last of the summer vine, if I'm not mistaken. She made some lovely drop earrings um, and I'm sure that was with the lucite leaves. Um, and it was the open day, the first open day that I got to go to. And she sat outside with our lovely uh, members and we all had a nice cup of tea or a coffee. And she just sat designing and making them. And I don't know whether it's because they're so pretty or I was just so in awe of watching her just sit and design. Um, but yeah, I fell in love with them then and I thought, I want to make something. I think they'd make a really pretty necklace as well, to be honest. Um, you can do all sorts that you want with them. Um, but I thought a bracelet would be 
be sweet. So let's see how many I've got. I have done a bit of a random mix there, but hopefully you'll get to see just how easy they are to attach. Um, and as I say, you get in so many in those mix packs. I think they were what, six pounds. Um, so you can you can come up with all sorts of different colours and designs. Right, let's add let's add a couple of beads. These that I'm using are eight mil. I just had them in my pack um, amongst my stash, but I thought those blues would go beautiful with the blue flowers. I think the pink, of this gorgeous light pink, would go gorgeous with them. And I'm going to also add in some of these lovely fuchsia pink ones as well. Because I think they would look, they look like berries. So I'm going to move these out of the way a little bit. Because I'm very aware that my camera is probably struggling to pick up. Um, and focus. Angela says, could you make these into decorations, leaves on a vine? Yeah, you definitely could. Um, you, can, you can do anything you like with them. Um, you know, just because we look at different jewellery making techniques doesn't mean you can't think outside of the box and, you know, do something which might not be jewellery based. I should have made that pin a little bit neater, I'll be honest. Um, but I'm just getting excited now. Um, so, yeah, you can you can do anything with them. They might actually look really pretty if you had them hanging up in the garden. You know, if you're going to put them on a long chain, they could maybe go along your hedgerow. I've got a gorgeous rhododendron in my garden. Um, I've got three, actually. Um, they don't flower for very long and they grow at such a rapid pace but they would look lovely on there i think just excited at the thought of being able to sit outside when it's not raining and have some lovely summer nights just here. Bend that in a little bit. I didn't get my loop quite as neatly at the top there. So let's slow it down and do it again. Put in a little 90 degree bend in. Popping in my round nose pliers close to that bend. With my non-dominant hand turning that round. Repositioning my hand that's holding the pliers to bring that underneath. Give it a little twist if I need to make sure that that pin, that loop is sitting neatly at the top. If you want to, you can hold down the loop not to distort it with your pliers. Make those wraps close to that loop as you can. Trim it off. And then all I'm going to do is put my round nose back in the loop while I tuck that end in. There you go, that's much neater. So I've done some blue ones. Let's do a couple of the fuchsia and the light pink. And then let's just start popping them on. I'm a little bit aware of time. I could just sit and do this. I find this quite therapeutic. Quite like turning my loops. So I'll rush these ones. The good thing is about making a wrapped loop is you've got that security. Um, you know, sometimes when you're making an open close loop, you can then 
open and close it to to pop it onto other things but if you've not closed that loop um that you've made properly over a bit like a jump ring sometimes it can open up when you're doing a wrapped loop like this it's really really secure these little charms aren't going to fall off I say, I'm going to make sure that my desk is nice and clear. And then as I go, you'll see I've got <laughs> an abundance of stuff at the side. That's a lovely idea, Mina. She says, a leaf connected to a loop bead would make a lovely earring. You're getting so many in these. You can, you know, you do all sorts with them. You'll easy get quite a few matching sets out if you want to do some little earrings and some um, a bracelet and maybe a necklace. You don't even have to do a full necklace. You could just add some on to the middle of your chain. I think that would look lovely. In fact, I will make a full set at some point and then when I am getting to sit in the garden in the summer, I'll wear it then. Thank you, Lucy, for sharing that link for us again. So I'm just repositioning my hand where I've got that little loop. And then I'm just going to tuck that back down. So let's do two more of them and then let's find where I've put my jump rings. Don't think I've got quite an, an even um, amount of colours. I think I could have done with some more green. And you know, you don't have to layer them up. You can do if you like. I think they look nice layered up. You can just attach them on individually if you want to. behind that leaf. Lucy, you could be right there. They might just be. Mina says, what beads are you using and what size, please? The beads look lovely. These are the eight millimeter beads um, and they are the opaque glass beads. So if you were watching uh, the last live where we made, what were we doing? Um, oh, the macrame, of course. So while I was doing the macrame, um, because you get so many beads and so much rat ale, I had a few left over. So I have just used those because I thought they were lovely bright colours and a very nice match to go with my gorgeous lucite leaves that I'm using today. You don't have to add the beads on if you don't want to. You can just use all of the gorgeous leaves and the gorgeous flowers. But as I say, I think they just add that little extra. And to me, they look like berries. <laughs> Lucy says she recognised those pinks. Right, what am I going to do? I'm going to add a couple more leaves on their own, just the green ones. And then we're going to get these made into a bracelet. It doesn't take long at all. 
So again, bending my loop around my, no from around my nose pliers, just repositioning my pliers, making sure that loop is fitting or sitting rather nice at the top, making sure my rack loops are close to that little loop. The quicker I do them, the less neat I'll be cut. But I'll be honest, you don't see them when they're on. So providing, just tuck that down. So I tend to hold it with my thumb to keep it pushed up against that leaf. I'm going to bend so I've got 90 degrees. Make that loop close to that bend. Bring it round. Reposition if I need to. Just straighten it up. Give it a little wrap. A trim. And a tuck. Okay. I think that should do all right for now. I've got a nice little pile going there. So I'm going to get my chain. And I'm going to get my jump rings. I'm using the 6mm jump rings for these. So I'm going to pull a couple of those out. And I'm going to get my pliers. I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to start to attach them onto the chain. I'm probably going to put one on every couple or every few little links. It doesn't matter too much. So I'm going to start off with just one of my leaves. I'm popping my jump ring through that loop that I've made on the back, attaching it onto my link on my chain and closing it over. Then I'm gonna take a little flower, I think. Open up my jump ring. Now you might be really particular with this. You might wanna do leaf, flower, smaller leaf bead and have a little kind of repetition in terms of where you want to attach on in an order. For me, I'm just picking them up at random really. Um, I'm not too concerned about what goes on where or when. That is just me. And every few, I'm just going to pop it onto my jump ring and my jump ring through the link on the chain. Opening it up, take your bead or your leaf, add that through your little loop onto your jump ring. And onto your chain. This Figaro chain is really, really lovely. I think it's a nice, nice width. Um, you've got really nice um, sized links in there, so and they're not too fiddly to get on. You can see what you're doing quite clearly, um, and it, it's nice and comfortable to wear. Adding on and closing up. Now lay it, lay it flat as I'm doing it just to see, you know, what extra colour we need in there. Make sure you're closing your jump rings up properly. Just go past that point where they meet. I'm going to add 
So yeah, so I'm not really being too particular what I pick up. And now I'm like, yeah, I need one of them. And no, nope, I haven't got one of them yet. Just going to take that jump ring and give it a little wiggle as I bring that back just to close that up a little bit. Pauline says they look beautiful. They're just really straightforward to do and very enjoyable to do, I think, as well. And, you know, these will nicely move around and jingle, so I'm not too, too fussed about uh, are they sitting on one side, are they going on there, because as you wear them, they'll move around, but they'll all be kind of facing up. And you're getting that lovely kind of little bunched up effect at the moment. So open up my jump ring. Let's pop another bead on. Love the noise that they make. So some I'm putting on quite close together. I'll tend to add them on and then I will wear it or hold it up and just check if I can see any large kind of spaces in the chain of just the links and think, do I need to add an extra one at all on anywhere? I'm gonna go for another lovely little flower. And close that up. Lena says, I might make earrings as I made a necklace last month or post a pic later. Thank you, Mina. If you're making anything, share it in the group. I am absolutely loving seeing um, the wire work creations that you've been doing the last week or so. We've got some absolute talent in the group. I've had some very nice comments and messages from people saying I've inspired them to give it a go. Um, or pick it back up again if it's something that they've not done in a little while. And um, it's nice to know I'm all converting you in to talented wire wrappers as well as extremely talented beaders. So if you have anything that you've made that you're, you know, particularly proud of, or that, you know, maybe we're doing something on a live and you've done something similar before, share it in the handmade group because you inspire others if you've got any questions people you know will always be on hand to help answer anything that you might not be sure of it could be anything from you know how do i get the tension right in this or what jewelry glue is best to use on that or what size this should i be using and everyone in the group is very lovely and very very helpful so I think at the moment I've got quite a lot to work with. At first I was thinking, have I made enough? But I've only got small wrists, so I've only done quite a short chain length. And I've still got an abundance of flowers and leaves to attach. And you know, sometimes less is more. But sometimes more is more as well, isn't it? <laughs> See, Camille's got a good suggestion. She says, I like to start in the middle so I can gauge how many I need. Well, that's too logical for me, Camille. I'd say I'm doing a nice full one. So I'll probably add some more on into the middle if I feel it needs it. But yeah, on the handmade group, 
you'll have people that share very helpful suggestions like Camille who says why have you done it this way try it like that I think these are looking very pretty together, I must say. Penny says, very pretty, Natalie. Lucy says, nice summer bracelets, very pretty. I will be finishing off shortly because I know I'm probably keeping you from whatever it is you're doing this afternoon. I'm gonna have a busy afternoon. I've got lots of um, just general like jobs in terms of housey stuff that I need to do and some finance bits and sort out my car. I've also got, um, going to try and start working on a tiara so I have a friend who is um, getting her costume ready already for World Book Day and she's asked if I could um, make it something well she said did she did I know anywhere she could get something like this from and I was like I could do that I'll give it a go so I don't know what I've signed myself up to but I'll probably be having a little go with that as well. So let's see, do I need to add any more? We've started with a leaf, so we'll finish with a leaf. Yeah, I can add some more on into the middle of that as well. Lucy has shared the link to the handmade group. So if you are watching us on YouTube and you've not seen our handmade group, then what are you waiting for? A lovely group of friendly people waiting to help and assist you and share ideas with. Um, and we all get on really well. Everyone's very, very kind and very supportive because, well, we've all got a shared passion and a shared love of beading and making. Camille says, I've got lots to do, cards to make, laundry, but I don't feel like rushing. Well, maybe we could just stay here, Camille. Me and you, just keep making. I've got packing to do, I've got things to do for going away. I feel like I've got enough, but I've got two extra and I'm not letting them go to waste. So I am going to add everything. Pop that one there. And let's just give it a little look. I mean, it's looking pretty full, isn't it? If you put less on, you get to see more of the beautiful detail. But sometimes more is more. <laughs> I'm going to pop that one there. Okay, so there you have it. So he says, I signed myself up to make personalised patchwork lanyards for all the volunteers at the local care home for the Jubilee yesterday. So that is lovely. Um, well done you. I hope it goes really well. Listen to them. So these are my gorgeous, gorgeous summer bracelet. So I'm going to lay it out like this for you. I'm going to lay them out flat. So this is the colour mix that I've just done. If you want to keep it to one colour, then you can do. These are the gorgeous greys and whites. There are a couple of grey flowers in there. 
but they're mainly just different size leaves and there's no beads in that one. I think that's beautiful. Joanne, I agree. She says it looks like it could have come from a fairy's jewellery box. For me, these are flower fairy bracelets. They remind me, as I say, at the beginning of Midsummer Night's Dream. Um, what's the Queen of the Fairies? She called Titania in Midsummer Night's Dream. Though she is little, she is but fierce. Um, so I probably misquoted that. So that is the gorgeous purples. Again, I've used the white against the purple flowers and leaves. A gorgeous blue. And I have added, look how pretty they are. I have added a couple of the beads in there. Again, I've used eight mil beads. You can use whatever you like. I think some clear crystals in this would look particularly lovely. Um, in fact, on here, I think some beautiful uh, rose quartz would look rather nice on my pink one. So there you have it. A very messy table by me, but I've had an awful lot of fun. Sue says, those purples are lush. And says, those grey and white are gorgeous. Uh, Lucy has started a crystal art notebook yesterday. And it's one of those projects that I can't do anything else until it's finished. Um, then he says she loves anything with flowers and leaves. Um, so that was how easy they were to do. Um, yeah, I think, you know, for me, if I was using flowers and leaves, I'm thinking colour, I'm thinking bright, I'm using all of what I've got in that lovely mixed bag. Um, however, just making like the monochrome one, where have you gone? With the greys and the whites. Thinks looks really elegant, really classy. Um, and as I say, I wouldn't have chose to use those colours because I'd be thinking brights, flowers, florals. So having that lovely mixed bag means that, you know, you can pick out the ones that, you know, you particularly want to use. So as I said to you, on the mixed bag, we've got brilliant offers today for you. So the mixed bag is 40% off. Your single packs are 25% off. So you've got an absolute bargain there. For a big bag of mixed small, 170 leaves is £6. Your large ones, you're getting 75 pieces. That's £6. 100 pieces of your flower mix is £6. So they should be £9.99. You've got a really, really good deal, I think, there. Um, so you all seem to be liking them. We've got um, people particularly liking the grey and the white. We've got... Um, people like in the purples lucy i would not be surprised that you like the pink but she says she also likes the mixed color one um sheila says i'm liking the look natalie thank you for a great demonstration you are more than welcome uh, thank you all for joining us today i hope you've had a very lovely morning um i hope you have a very good week i'm very confused what day we're on this week it's wednesday today isn't it um so i'm gonna get busy and as I say, I won't see you on Friday. It will be Kitty with you on Friday. I'm going to be busy um, traveling down to Clacton. Um, so I will see you mm, Sunday. Um, who knows when? Uh, Camille says, thanks, Natalie. Guess I better make the effort and get the birthday cards done. Have a lovely day and a safe trip down to see Kitty. I will. Thank you very much for that. Okay, lovelies, um, I've kept you a little bit longer than I should have done, um, but thank you for joining me today. Lots of love and light to you, and have a lovely afternoon. Take care. Bye.